in technology uh, for more than 17 years. Okay, um, and he he builds and secures uh, companies um, so that they they have less uh, less to worry about in terms of risk um, with with crimes of cyber. I'll call it. Um, He's currently with ASRC as their Chief Information Security Officer. Um, and, and in that role, he's, um, he's managing assets to cover a $4 billion company. Okay. And, and ASRC is uh, financial services, um, it's healthcare, it's construction, it's retail, it's energy, it's, it's a conglomerate. But the first two, the um, the retail and the, or sorry, the financial and the healthcare, um, really require attention because you're not allowed to make mistakes with those, and the regulations on those portions of the company, uh, in terms of cyber, are probably threefold what it is on on the other. So um, I, I'm going to be quiet now because I don't want to take up too much time. But I will tell you that the best thing about Darren is that he knows where all the good restaurants are. <laughs> okay, so with that, Darren. Thank you. So, um, yeah, just a little bit more about me so from a um, from a cyber cybersecurity program perspective. Um, you know, like, like uh, Dean mentioned. I'm responsible for the security program for uh, the, the entire organization that, that I, I work for. So it's, it's a reasonably sized organization, and really the uh, the key part of what I'm trying to do with today's presentation is to talk about some of those things that a lot of the organizations really aren't um, implementing very well. Um, I have I, I love tools. We've implemented a lot of tools within our organization, but I think one of the things that I think is lacking in today's world is just the, the, the foundational information security items. So uh, obviously we have an agenda. I won't spend too much time on this slide. If I have not spent any time on this slide, because what I'll end up doing is using up my, all my other slides um, and won't be able to talk to them. So executive buy-in. Um, you know, I think that you know, if, if, you, if you do a quick Google search, you'll end up finding that there's no shortage of folks that are out there that are telling you cybersecurity, information security needs to be aligned with the business. I don't think anyone is surprised by that. I mean, that that's the talk. But I don't think people do it very well. Um, I don't think that the information security program, the cybersecurity programs, are thinking about what their business is doing, how they can come alongside the business, um, provide value to their, their business stakeholders. I think there's a lot of focus on, again, technology solutions. Um, you know, I'll talk about that, you know, is security really about technology or about something else? We'll talk about that later. But from an executive buy-in perspective, what are we actually talking about? Who are the executives? And I think that one of the things that's really key here is, you know, you, you need to get your CIO support, right? I mean, that's a no-brainer because they're going to implement a lot of things for you. But your CIO is not necessarily who I'm talking about when I'm talking about your executives. I'm talking about your, your you know, well, certainly your CIO is in the C-suite. All the other C-suite individuals, your board, and those folks. Because um, the reality is, is you know, your, your CIO, depending on their focus, may be a very technolo technologically focused individual, but may not necessarily be thinking about the, the core business, business or mission that the, your organization is trying to focus on. So absolutely, from an executive perspective, you need to be talking to the, the, the C-suite individuals. And the key thing about this is, so that you can have an impact from a business perspective, is to be focusing on Communication. It's not just a matter of going up there talking about charts. You know, one of the things I like to tell folks is, you know, if you're talking to your C-suite, your board level folks, and they're they're kind of staring up in the right hand corner of the room, kind of zoning out, you're, you're talking about the wrong things. So really, it's about asking questions. You know, from from a from the perspective of, you know, what what do they care about? Um, what you know, making sure that you're going around and actually talking to your different C-suite folks. You know, whether it be you know. Uh, your CEO, your COO, your HR folks, actually understanding what the mission is. Because you may, be, you may actually be surprised. Um, you know, I know I'm always surprised when I talk to a different mission group within our organization. And I'm like, wow, you really do that? And to me, that's where the cybersecurity program comes in. We're not about implementing firewalls. We're about making sure that we understand what the business folks are doing so that we can, we can implement, help implement the technology correctly within the organization. 
you know, the, the first comment there. Without the executive level commitment, you're not going to have a functioning information security program. Um, you may be an IT security director, you may be implementing tools, but you're not going to be having the impact that you're looking for. You're certainly not going to, if you need to be making changes within your organization, you're not going to have that necessary, that buy-in, being able to be a, kind of a change agent in your, within your organization. Um, you know, a lot of organizations, you, you look at some of the things that we're seeing from the breaches that we've seen this year. I mean, it just seems like each year we're having more and more breaches that are occurring. And what you're seeing is, is that you know, the, the organizations aren't coming into kind of that modern way of thinking. The fact that you, know, you can't just assume that IT infrastructure is kind of like the plumbing. If it's not leaking, it's okay. Uh, the reality is, is that our IT infrastructures are, are very leaky and you know, we need to work within the organization to kind of make changes that could impact the way you know, the, the users, the, the folks that work for the organization, they're actually doing business and mission work. Maybe it's the way that they do their business. So you need to have that executive buy-in because you know, if you're going to be doing something where you, know, you may be impacting, you know, let's say you know, from my perspective looking at, at, at federal contracting, if I've got someone where I may be impacting the ability for someone to do a proposal, then you know, I need to have my executive buy-in so that you know, we can have, that they understand what it is we're doing, why we're doing it, and that I'm communicating not just to them, but all the way down the line so they understand that, you know, it, it kind of, it, it's kind of a joke to say we're adding value, you know, we're adding value to the organization, you know, it's kind of a marketing way of things when you see value being added by vendors or whatever um, to a product. But the reality is, is that we're, we're, we're coming alongside to make sure that we're supporting the, the business and the mission. Um, there were, the, the idea that security maturity must be an abs absolute organizational requirement. So obviously, being able to implement a strong security program is important. But the reality is that you have to build the program for the organization that you're in today and that you have to mature that program as you go forward. Um, you, know, you can't really see it from the, uh, the slide that's up there, but I mean, you can obviously see you know, the, the, the left's a smaller bar, the, the, the right's a bigger bar. And the reality is, is that you know, wherever you come into an organization, you need to build that program and keep moving it and keep helping your, your executives understand that you know, this is not a point in time uh, uh, expenditure, that you're, you're not going to be able to do one project and say, we're done with the information security program. It's a continuous process, it's, it's continuous work. And if you aren't talking to your executives, if you aren't having that conversations with them, they're, they're not gonna understand that. They're gonna think that, you know, okay, I, I've expended this money, I, I've uh, you've done this project, I should be, I should be done. And that, that's also kind of that conversation around the investment around information security and helping to drive that conversation around the fact that what it is that you're doing is an investment for the organization. It's not just cost, it's not like, buying more phones or something like that. The fact that the work that you're doing is actually helping to build that, that, that way of doing work for the organization that's gonna obviously be what we need to do moving forward because the way that we've been doing things just simply isn't gonna be working properly. And I think part of that problem is, is that we're not having these sort of conversations. When you're talking about risk ownership, I think that you really can look and you can see some of these breaches where the risk decisions were probably being made at the wrong location. Um, you probably had some IT folks, maybe, maybe you had some cyber folks that were saying hey, this, this risk is okay. But you know, the reality is, is I think that you ended up seeing where instead of it being pushed up into the organization, wherever appropriate, it may not have made it to the C-level. But the reality, you, know, you move up through the hierarchy and push that, that risk conversation up. And the reality, if you get to that C-level person and they say, you know what, I can live with that risk, and it's a risk that you can work with in this, within the organization, and that's absolutely you know, their job and their responsibility. But I think that when you start seeing some of these, these small issues from, a, from an IT hygiene perspective that were pervasive this year, I think that there were a lot of decisions that were being made at lower levels where they should have been made up at higher levels. So, that they, so just simple things, you think about the thing when it goes into to managing an IT infrastructure. And the resources and costs, I mean, these things cost money. I think people are making decisions where they're saying, well, we can't afford this from a budgetary perspective. We're not going to go ask for the money. We're not going to go ask for resources. And the reality is that's not the, that's not the person down here. That's not their responsibility. They need to be pushing that up and saying, we've got a risk. You know, we, 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 we can't support running our information systems properly. So here's, here's what we need. 
and, and making a very good case for why you need resources, why you need the, the expense to implement something new to support the, the overall environment. And um, information security must be integrated into the organization. And kind of that, that speaks to the fact that you know, when, when I go to um, you know, human resources or when I go to finance, when I go to maybe an operating group within my organization, they have to know that information security is part of the organization, that we have executive buy-in. And it's not something that you come through, you know, this, this is not a hammer to be walking around with and um, you know, going to different groups and saying, you know, I have authority from my, my C-level suite, you will listen to me. Because that only lasts so long. You know, but, but they need to know that we have executive support. Because ultimately, this is two things. So from an executive buy-in perspective, I have their support. I've, you know, you've done that work. You, your executives believe in what you have to say. But then there's also, from integration within the organization perspective, there's this customer service component from, a, from an information security perspective that I think is, is lacking in many organizations. Oftentimes, when information security shows up, the, the first response is, oh no, I can't, yeah, this is the worst thing. We're, we're now suddenly going, we're going to have um, increases in costs, we're going to lower schedules. That's what people are used to hearing, that's what people are used to seeing. And I think that has to change. Um, you know, information security has to be a customer service organization. Um, you know, one of the things I like to say is, you know, if there's if there's five ways of doing something and there's three that are secure, let, let's focus on those three. Let's throw out those two and let's start working on so, solutioning the issue, solutioning the solutioning the problem to where we, we can we can fit into something that meets your business requirements and is secure. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's absolutely key. Having those conversations. With throughout the business and, and making sure that you're su you're supporting the the, the the customer requirements at at the lower level, making sure you're meeting their needs. You know, policies, procedures, and guidance. Um, you know, I mean, those are kind of foundational to the, the the ability for the information security program to actually function within an organization. You know, they they need to have the support of your top level executives. Um, you know, where, wherever that flows down to. If, if you're you know if you're if you're top level, you know, wherever, you know, if it is the CIO, if they have the authority to sign those things, if it's your CISO, whoever that is, but they have to have that top level buy-in for that. From a, um, kind of from, from an initial perspective, the charter for an information security program, where, again, your executives say, this is what your authority is, and again, it's not a stick, it's not to be going around and hitting people over the head with it, saying, you know, I have this authority, you will listen to me, because it only lasts so long, especially if you make a misstep then you have absolutely no goodwill with the folks that you're working with. So I think, you know, the, I think the information security programs that focus on goodwill, customer service, and, and at, at, you know, within the organization, I think they're the ones that are being very highly successful because folks are getting, are used to, um, you know, being able to reach out to them, being able to uh, uh, get, get uh, uh, feedback from them. And that, that's the key thing from, from a cyber program perspective is if you're not, if they're not, if the folks in the organization are not reaching out to you, then you're missing half of what's going on. You're just simply not going to um, have visibility in everything, regardless of how good. If you, if you have a program management organization, or if you have some other business function that where you have visibility into projects and programs, you simply aren't going to have visibility if folks aren't coming to you. Um, so I think from a communications, and that's really the key thing that this slide's all about: talking, communications. Hitting the streets, or you know, hitting, hitting the street, hit, hitting the, 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 the office, and making sure you're talking to everyone as much as possible. Again, it's not a focus on tools. I mean, this this is really a slide all about communications, all about you know process, procedure, and things like that. But not for the purposes of you know, just focusing on documentation for documentation's sake. It's really about making sure that you know from a policy's perspective, don't write a policy you're not going to follow. And I don't mean don't not follow your regulatory requirements or anything like that. If you're going to create a policy, make sure you're talking to the folks that are going to implement it. Is this something they're actually going to do? Don't create it as a cyber program and assume that just because you create it, it means anything. Um, you know, make sure that from a policy perspective, procedure guidance, it's actually implementable. And of course, it has to follow, you know, from a regulatory perspective, you have to follow you know, what it is you need to follow. People and processes. So ultimately, you know, 
And this is where you know information security is not about the technology, it's about protecting data. So, you know, when you're talking to, when, you, when you're talking to your executives, when you're talking to uh, your business managers, your, your line employees, the thing that you need to focus on is what, what is the data within the organization? And there's lots of ways that you can, you can structure from a technology perspective. Um, you know, there's lots of ways to say, you know, from a, from a, from a segmentation perspective, you know, we're going to treat an entire part of the organization a certain way. You, you certainly can do that. But the reality is, is, is let's say you, you build an environment within your organization, you say it's got a moderate level of assurance. What if you've got something that's higher? What if you've got something that's more important and you don't know? So from a, you know, hitting the streets, being able to talk to your executives and your managers, you need to talk with them. You, know, you need to say, you know, what kind of data are you processing within the organization? You know, what, what, what kind of intellectual property do you have? You know, what kind of, you know, do, are we processing PI information, HIPAA information? You know, it may have different levels of, of, uh, of security controls that we need to apply to protect that information. Um, you know, talking with the, uh, your executives and the folks that are responsible for running your mission, you know, they're going to know about things that, you know, what's going to cause our customers to lose confidence in us? You know, what's going to get us onto the, uh, you know, the news? And again, these, these are not technology conversations. These are completely having conversations with your, 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 your mission folks, your business folks, and making sure that you, you're getting that feedback from them. Because really, from my perspective, what I bring to my organization is I, I kind of see myself as the intermediary between IT and the business. I'm going out talking to them more about you know, what keeps them up at night, what do they care about, what data do they have. And I can come back to IT and say, well, this, this is, these are the conversations I've had. Here are their concerns, and let's build solutions that support what it is that they need. You know, one of the things that I say, and I think it, it's held pretty true with that within my career, you know, certainly, you know, I think it just holds true everywhere. If, if you talk to IT, you aren't necessarily talking to cyber. And I think some different organizations think that, you know, because maybe they have an IT person in the room, that you know, they're dealing with all of their requirements. And that's one of the things that, you know, everywhere I've worked, I make sure that everyone knows, make sure you're including us because IT has very much a focus of getting it running, whereas cyber is very much focused on the data. You know, it is the data being protected? It is the, are, are we putting those right focuses on there? You know, and the slide is over to the, to the right there. It's really talking about, you know, if you have different data components within, or different data buckets within your organization, you know, you may put different security controls associated with those data buckets. Um, the other thing that's incredibly important from, and you know, we've kind of talked about this, is the integration of the cyber program into the SDLC. One of the things that I, I focus on, and it's really, as I talked about before, about being a customer-focused cyber program so people actually show up, you know, people knock on your door to say, hey, we're starting a project. Initiation, you know, being available, you know, and it's one of the things that I talk with, uh, with, with my folks, my organization is, you know, if you think if you're thinking about starting a project, you know, that's what I'm here for. Just just call me up, we'll, you know, or I'll come over. We'll talk about the project. So, you know, and one thing that I've learned is people are incredibly conscientious. Some people will think of a project, we'll have a conversation about it, and they're like, you know what? I don't want to put our data out there like that. You know, we're not going to do that. So some projects just stop, not because I'm telling them no, because you know we'll, we'll work with them. But they'll say, you know what? That's not something I think I want to do, and you know, they kind of go in a different direction. Um, you know, but the key thing is, you know, when we're working from an initiation perspective, you know, I can I, I can provide resources for that project. You know, they've got that, that information security person working on the project right away. It it it, it works very well. Um, from a requirements perspective, you know, one of the things that's really key within again all the organizations I've worked in is if you listen to folks talk about requirements, they'll usually talk about functional requirements and security requirements, and one of the things that I really push is there's just requirements. Because when people say security requirements, oftentimes what that means is those are the things I can pull in. Yeah, I, can, I, can, I can create a, a plan of action, a model sentence for those. I don't have to do those uh, because there, there, there's a way to get out of those. And what, you know, I, I, by being at initiation, being part of that conversation right up front, being in the requirements conversation, we're actually building this stuff in to the beginning. Um, and yeah, there, there's more than enough studies that have shown if you get there, you know, you're going to save costs because you're not, you're not going to be putting in at the end, you know, when you test, you're not going to find out that there's something you missed. 
Um, or if you do test and you find out it's something you missed, it's something you planned for, you just didn't do, and you can fix it right away. You know, from a design perspective, um, you know, one of the things that I implement uh, within my organization is a security engineering team. So, you know, and that, that's actually the folks that, that get assigned to my organization you know, right after initiation. So from a security engineering perspective, working with the, 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 the design folks that are building the systems, make sure that the security controls are actually being implemented properly. Um, and and, and you know, from that initiation and requirements perspective, talking through you know, with the business folks about you know, how they're going to interact with the data, you know, what kind of users are going to interact with the data, it, you know, whether or not there's going to be internet access, internal access, understanding exactly how they plan on using this, this, this tool and what they're going to actually use it for. We can build really good security controls around that to make sure that the, the mission is being protected. Um, focusing on implementation, implementation and testing, you know, we're right there making sure that all the security controls that we designed in, that you know, we, we tested those and that they're effective. Um, you know, from, from an operations and, and maintenance perspective, you know, kind of continuous monitoring. You know, so my, my, you know, a good security or cyber program is going to be focusing on making sure that you know, whatever it is you designed and whatever it is you think you built that day, it's continuing because the day you build it, it changes right afterwards. So making sure that you know, as regulatory requirements change, that you have the ability to test for those new requirements. Um, every requirement that you had in the requirements phase, you know, that you, you found that you implemented properly, that they stayed that way over time, that you have the ability to reach back out to operations and make sure that if something changes, that you can actually uh, get those things fixed. Uh, and then disposition, you know, we make sure that, you know, anything that um, needs to be cleaned up and cleared out before a system is uh, end of life, we make sure that those, those sort of things are done. So, so the real thing there is it's just making sure that the, the cyber program is properly resourced and part of the organization from the business and IT perspective so they can have all the conversations that they need to have with everyone and can support this entire function. I mean, this is what we have to do today. Um, be, and the key thing is, if you look again at the kind of stuff that we're seeing in the, the, the news today, or everything we've seen this year, so much of it is, I think, because we're just not having this integration within the business and IT groups because it's simple stuff. It's not these grand um, uh, attacks that are happening. It's, you know, the test servers left um, out on DMZs. It misconfigured uh, Amazon servers. Um, people didn't patch. I mean, that's what's happening. It, it's not, you know, some, some newly designed exploit that, you know, some nation state, you know, I mean, spent millions. Of, I mean, it, it's old exploits. So I think you know, integrating and doing you know, continuous testing. I think it's going to be you know, great for organizations. So IT hygiene. Uh, there, there's lots of IT hygiene components that we could focus on. Um, I chose to focus on a few. Um, you know, one of the things that I put here is not cyber hygiene. So one of the things that I talk about within uh, my organization and you know, everywhere I have the opportunity to. Is I think that when we're talking about cyber hygiene, we're talking about the wrong thing. So the reason I say IT hygiene is, well, you know, some folks will lump in some things like IPS and firewalls and things like that into cyber hygiene. A lot of the things that we're seeing are, are not things the cyber group runs. And when we say cyber hygiene, again, it kind of it fires off in the, in, in the organization's head is, oh, the CISO handles that. I don't patch. Now, I, I, I monitor patching, but I'm not responsible for patching. Uh, you know, from a secure configurations perspective, I don't actually implement the configurations. You know, I have the guidance, I, I support operations, but actually pushing out the policies, that's not me. You know, so I think focusing on from an IT hygiene perspective, it, it's an operational function. You know, and I think that it's just a, it's a very different way of looking at it. Um, you know, if you look at this statistic here, uh, was it from last year's Verizon uh, data breach? 85% of the successful exploits are uh, you know, uh, target the top 10 most common vulnerabilities and they're 13 to 17 years old. There's a problem there, right? So from a simple IT hygiene perspective, tools are great. Tools are absolutely fantastic. You know, going out, you know, getting the best IDS, there's, there's so many great tools that are saying they have the best automation, they have the best, uh, you know, all, all these advanced malware tools and they're great and, and, and I implement them and I have them. But if we're not patching, and if we're not patching 13 to 17 year old patches, that's something we should be focusing on because that's what folks are going after. 
Um, if you look at the examples, you know, you've got you know, a WannaCry um, screenshot up there in the corner. You know, again, very old. Um, how, how, how can you fix that? Patching and configuration changes. Um, you didn't have to have that particular vulnerability happen within your organization. Um, you look at what happened with, within Equifax. Yeah. A, a vulnerable server um, that was vulnerable, uh, you know, there was, was a few months where they had the opportunity to patch that particular server. Again, you know, simple things that can be focused on from an IT hygiene perspective. You know, so from a, from a focus factor, patching is just, is, is just so foundational. There's really no point where we should not be doing it. And, and one of the things, a lot of the, a lot of, a lot of the things that folks will say is, you know, I can't have the downtime, I can't push out that this, this information, or I can't have my system rebooting, or I don't have the resources to do the patching. And it goes back to the other slide, probably not having the right conversations. It's being internalized. I mean, I, I can say, I, I, I've had conversations with, 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 with other folks um, out in the industry, and some of the things, you know, I've heard are, you know, um, you know like a great example is, you know, I don't have the resource to do, uh, um, say, network patching. You know, and you talk to them about what their problems are. And, you know, they're like, why? Well, I need three to five resources to do it. And I can't do it. And I go, well, you know, did you take that conversation up further? Like, well, no. Well, okay. You know, follow your chain of command. You know, did you talk to your CIO? No. Okay, go have, go have that conversation. You know, and then, you know, then there's that back and forth dialogue between management and, and the implementers. And they're talking, you know, it ends up finding, you know, they find a perfect solution to, auto, to, to do an automated solution. They didn't need three to five people to do network patching. And they found an absolute, uh, an, an elegant way of getting the correct resources and making sure that you know, the network environment can be patched in, in a proper way. Those are the kind of conversations that we need to be having. Um, if, if you're not, if you think as an IT group that you can't take the hit from, let's say, a, 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 a reboot perspective, yeah, you got to elevate that conversation. You got to have the risk-based conversation with, with the organization and say. Look at who, look at our peers. Look at what's happening out in the world. Um, do we want to be an Equifax? Do we want to be this? Do we want to be that? And at this point, what's great is it's not really. It used to be like a fear, uncertainty, and doubt. You know, FUD for cybersecurity was you know you, you're just saying these issues are going to happen. But the reality is that they are happening, and we can point to other folks across industries, not just one industry, and say here's some real problems that we're seeing. Let's focus on getting the resources and getting the time. You know, so. If it's not critical, then we're not necessarily going to shut the entire environment down and, and, and reboot the entire environment, you know, on one night and affect the business. We can schedule those sort of things, right? And that, that's where executive management comes in. They can make those kind of decisions. They can say, well, we can't, we can't shut down right now, but we can shut down two days from now. And I say we will because they have the, they have the authority to say that. And those are the kind of conversations we need to be having. And they're, I think they're they're not happening. And if they are, they're lacking. Um, secure configurations, another incredibly important component. I mean, the reality is is that just because the system works doesn't mean it's it's, it's properly configured to run today. Um, whether you've got lots of uh, additional features that are running, you know, like down, at the, down here, like from a least functionality perspective, you know, do you have more things that are running on those devices than you need? If you don't, you need to take them off because um, the reality is, you know, if you if you if if you're server has 10 things on it and you only need two things running well those other eight things are a potential avenue for someone to attack you so you take those eight things off um, you know from a uh, user privileges perspective if you are allowing your end users to have unfettered local admin access stop it you know that's something you need to create a project plan for and make sure that you're, you're, you're pulling those things back and there's ways of dealing with it you know, if you've got business just and you need to have a process, again, where you can be customer service oriented, right, as a security program. If you've got folks, you know, you're going to have some number of your population that are going to raise their hand, go, I have to have admin. There's ways of doing that. There, there's additional um, accounts that you can give, other ways to provide access to a system um, if they need those kind of privileges. Um, application security is huge, right? I mean, this, this, is, this is falling in under an IT hygiene perspective. And, Application security could be a comp, could be a presentation all of in, in it itself, but making sure that you're talking with your your app developers, making sure that you're giving them the correct training. The reality is, is from from the thing that I've seen in my career is folks are conscientious. They they they, they want to do the right thing, 
They just don't necessarily have the right information um, to help them do their job. They don't necessarily have the right training. Um, and the key thing is, is, is again, going back to the first slide, is having the conversation with them, giving them your requirements, telling them exactly what it is um, that you need to do, why you need to do it, and why, why it's important for the organization. I, I, I've never run into a situation, yeah, I mean, sometimes it takes a little longer, right? Sometimes there's a little bit of long suffering in there where you need to kind of elongate that and you know, just kind of let it, let it go for a little while. But I've never worked in an organization where if you aren't having the right conversations and you aren't focusing on and treating the folks like, like they're people and not just like you're, you've got a security requirement and you're going to implement this, that there isn't some kind of common ground where you can work to and get this done. And again, from a risk perspective, if you can't come to a final solution, that's what management's there for. You know, it, it, it's not something where IT has to do this battle. You can come up with a common conversation, take it up to your management and say, you know, here's the risk. Um, you know, what, what say you? Um, so absolutely. Um, and then that little uh, you know, donut down there is really talking about, you know, just some of the things that you can kind of take away and, and, and really focus on making this sort of thing, stuff happen. So from an asset discovery perspective, from, a, from an IT hygiene perspective, if you don't know what you have, you're not going to be able, you're going to be an Equifax, right? So, you know, if, if you don't know that you have a Apache, a vulnerable Apache Strut server out there, if you don't know you have one to begin with, you're not going to patch it. So you need to have a really good inventory. Go out there and make sure that you, you, you understand what everything you have in your environment is um, so that you can focus on it. Um, from, a, from, from an assessment perspective, once you discover what everything is, actually, as a security program, make sure you're running your, your tools against it. Um, yeah, so I work with my operations groups to make sure that, yeah, and I don't, and again, I don't just throw the reports over the fence to them. So one of the things, again, from a customer service perspective, from my program is, you know, when we run those security assessments, you know, we, we take them to our operations group and we talk with them about them. Um, now, one of the things that has been fantastic about that is, because we did that, that, that those conversations are getting shorter and shorter, right? So. We didn't just throw them at them and say, you know, have a good day, because I've seen that happen, and it usually just turns into a fight. Um, but what we did was, is you know, we you know, we work with them, we talk with them about what it was we found. So then, just things like, let's say we were wrong, because we we worked with them, it wasn't a battle. It wasn't like we you told us this was wrong and it, this was misconfigured and 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 you're wrong. It didn't turn into that. It, it was it was a cordial conversation. And again, I think that's the biggest piece. That, that a security program can take is just make sh making sure that you're really focusing on working with your other your other peers and team members like the people, and I think you'll, you'll go a long way. Um, prioritizing remediation. So you know you know what you've got, you found problems. Not everything's important, right? So you got you know high, moderate, low. However it is you want to des uh, describe whether or not something's important, you know your highs and your criticals, you focus on those, um, your moderates and lows. And then you've got highs and criticals depending on your architecture, right? So if you've got a critical vulnerability stuck on a, a, a PC that isn't connected to the network, that's not something you need to focus on, right? Um, but if you've got a critical vulnerability sitting on a DMZ server um, that's internet facing critical application, you probably need to focus on that. So you need to work through and prioritize. And again, that, that's gonna help also when you're talking about working with your, your CIOs and your executives because then you're, you're not just coming and saying, here's a list of things that I didn't look at, and we need to do it all, and it's all the most important. Because that, then you're going to get beaten up, right? But if you can come in and you can say, here's a list of things, here's the criticals, and, and you know, as we're working through this list, this list is going to kind of take over, and it kind of goes back to the maturity conversation. It never stops. We're always going to be doing this sort of work. But, you know. Uh, and then the last little piece there is mitigate. So you've got your list. Um, you know what's important actually go out and fix the things that you know you need to fix. And then, you know, we talked about it, but you know, really the key to making sure that you've got this in place is resources. So from a, uh, you know, wh whether it's, it's making sure your organization has the right tools, making sure that your organization has enough people to actually you know, work the tools that they have. One of the things that is, you know, and I think this falls into the, the conversation behind why I say I love tools, but that's not what this conversation is totally about is people will buy tools, they'll think they're silver bullets, but they don't have the resources to build them properly, they don't have the resources to uh, manage them once they're built. Um, 
or they, they don't have the resources to buy the correct parts of the tools that they need to implement within their environment. So making sure that you're having the proper resource conversation to do all this. And, and if you don't, you know, make, make sure you can speak to where you're, you're deficient and go to your management about that. And I think the key thing there is, and I think why folks don't want to have those sort of conversations is because it oftentimes comes across as, I did, I did something wrong. You know, you, you entrusted me with this job to do this work, but I didn't come forward to you at any time other than now to tell you I didn't have enough resources. But I mean, I think there, there, this is kind of that time where people can do that, right? Because we're, we're, this, we should be changing into, this is how we operate and, and run our environments. So awareness and training. So from the, um, yeah, like the, the first bullet up there says, the number one security challenge is the end user. So when you're looking at um, where a lot of organizations are being penetrated right now, you're absolutely seeing it's, it's phishing, it's business uh, email compromise, it's uh, um, you know, links on um, um, you know, CNN, Fox News, New York Times on ad servers and things like that. It, it's on, on those endpoint computers. And again, this speaks back to kind of the user privileges perspective. You absolutely, you got to get folks who are doing their office automation. You don't want them using um, pri privilege accounts. So you want to manage. You want to manage that. But going back to um, you know, focusing on awareness and training. You absolutely awareness and training is probably one of your most you know, key aspects that you, you can focus on within your organization. I'm very proud of the, the awareness and training program we built um, within our organization. Um, over the past couple of years, we, you know, we, we have a number of products that we put out to our, our, our uh, overall our organization so that we're not just sending emails. We certainly do send emails, right? And that, that particular little picture in the background, you know, it's one of our, our monthly newsletters we send out. That, you know, but we don't just focus on you know, business related things. We're making sure that we're providing folks with information they can use in their, their, their personal lives, things that ends up making them want to read a little bit more because these cyber related things, these technical challenges, they're in everyone's life now. So people are more likely to read them and get the kind of information that we want to provide them, especially if there's something there they can use for themselves. Um, you know, from a training perspective, um, you know, we focus on senior leadership, so some of those, um, those art, uh, the, the, the products we produce um, is you know, what we call them are um, the SLT briefings. And you know, we have you know, different levels of content we provide. We may provide them one week as an email, we may provide them one week as a briefing, um, but we're, we're providing them with information and we're talking to them, here's something that happened. Um, it, usually it's, here's something that happened in the world today, you probably saw it in the news, and this is what we're doing to combat that. So we can, kinda, we can have that conversation with them about kind of cybersecurity in the world and how we're, 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 we're working through that. From an IT user perspective, we're focusing, and we have things like our, our weekly newsletters. Um, most organizations have some sort of um, communication, whether it be quarterly or you know every, every twice a year or once a year. Make sure you're part of that, because a lot of folks will, will absolutely read those those uh, corporate organizational newsletters. Um, we, we make sure that we're part of those. Um, you know, we, we have you know, um, you know, depending on the projects we're working on, you know, we may we'll, we'll, it'll shrink and grow as the kind of communication space we have. Um, you know, we make sure that if there's something big, even if it doesn't affect us, you know, we, we have that ability where we'll send out flash updates. So if something big is in the news that comes out, you know, we'll, we'll say, you know, like when Equifax happened, you know, we send out a flash update just so that everyone knew, hey, this is happening, this is where you can get more information. And again, we're just being able to provide more information to, to folks. Um, from an IT user's perspective, um, you know, one of the things where we, we focused on, um, especially if we, we did a lot of work this particular year, is as much information as you can provide them about what it is you're doing, why it is you're doing it. So obviously we're sitting there and we're talking, you know, we're having meetings, we're, 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 we're having those conversations, but we're also sending them you know, the, the, the background information on what it is we're doing from a project perspective. But also kind of from, a, from an O&M perspective, what we're sending them is, you know, um, here's the threats for, for the particular technology. So if you're an application developer, you know, we'll, we'll send, you know, this is the information that we're seeing, um, you know, this week, um, you know, for, you know, application servers, uh, you know, 
from Windows servers, you know, whatever technology it is that we're, we're, we're sending those emails to our, our technical folks. Uh, the other thing we do is, especially in this area, it's really easy. Um, being in the DC area, there's lots of free conferences, lots of webinars, lots of free resources. So we, we cultivate those and we make sure that our technical folks have access to those uh, because most of the time they just don't realize they're here. Um, so there's lots of, lots of vendors that come in and provide uh, lots of free resources for training. And we make sure that uh, you know, our folks know that it's available to them. Um, from an organizational change management perspective, um, so that's a little bit different than training. So you know, from, from, from you know, building out a security program, you know, depending on where you are on that maturity level, you're, you're going to probably be you know, kind of rattling the company a little bit or your organization. So you need to make sure that you establish the kind of com communications with all of your users, you know, depending on their level, you know, kind of the same thing, senior leadership, IT users, or general users. Make sure you're having the right conversations with those folks, explaining why you're doing those things. So many of these things, I think, are derailing because of a lack of good communication. And I think you know, a, a good functioning organizational change management program where you know, when, when you're coming out with a new piece of technology, you, you, you're, you're hitting the folks with the right information. You're telling them why, why it's coming, what, you know, what's going to impact their lives, what's going to change, and explain to them why you're doing it. You know, again, I think people are conscientious. When you explain these things to them, you know, they're, you know, there certainly are going to be folks that you know may raise their hand and say yeah, it's not something I want to do. But I think that from a you know from a corporate culture perspective, that's the right way of, of communicating with your uh, team members. So visibility and response. So I think you know good visibility is a key to you know, really being able to work within your uh, your organization, be able to identify you know any potential incidents that are going to be out there. You know, one other thing, and again, this is also another conversation to be having with your executives. If there, if anyone thinks that you're going, you're never going to have a problem, then you're going to have a problem. So, you know, one of the things that um, I, I had heard an interesting um, story. There was a, a CISO for a, an energy company that lived that worked out in uh, California, and they got a virus on a computer. So, just a virus on a computer. They fired the CISO because they hired that CISO to not have any intrusions on their network. And the reality is the executives just had no idea. Now, they do understand now, and they probably shouldn't have fired the system, but you know, they shouldn't have fired the system for, for a virus on a computer. But the reality is, is you know, visibility. You need to be able to see what's going on in your network, and you need to have as many resources as you can. Um, one of the things that's very good, I think, that, that has worked for me is, and it, again, this is kind of best practices, but from a um, from 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 a log management perspective, um, most people don't like maintaining logs. Um, it takes up space. They don't want to deal with it. But if you use your own resources as, as a security program and provide access to them for everyone else, no one wants to maintain logs, but they love having them. So you know, one of the things I do, and this works from a regulatory perspective too. You need to maintain logs. Well, I'll maintain them for you. You don't have to ship them to me. I'll I'll do all the maintenance. I'll do all the operations of it and I'll give you access to your logs. And again, that, that's been very successful for me. So you've got folks, and also from, from, a, from, a, from a security program perspective, the more log data I have, the more likely I'm gonna be able to actually be able to see if an intrusion has happened on our network. So you, know, get, you, know, you get your applications uh, organization sending you logs, give them access. Now they have, you know, they, they can do troubleshooting on their applications. You know, you kind of go down the list, network systems, workstation. You know, and you can get all that information there. It's absolutely key to being able to uh, make sure as a security program you have uh, the information you need. And I think also from a uh, kind of getting buy-in there, it makes sure that all, all the other team members know that they can ship their information over and that they can use your they can use your system to do their troubleshooting and things like that. And I, yeah, I think it, 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 it's probably old, but from a utilize automation, I mean, the reality is if you're pulling in this kind of information, there's no way a human mind, no matter how many you have, are going to be able to sift through that. So you've got to make sure that it's important for you to get as much information as you have, but you need to figure out what it is you want. You know, so being able to go through and automate actually, you know, what are the things that are important? And what is it? What is an attacker going to look like? And you can build that into your environment. And without being able to do that, you, you essentially you're just going to have too much data to look at. But being able to kind of 
kind of pare that down and, and kind of build it into a smaller set of information, that, that's going to bring a lot of uh, success for you. Um, from an incident response perspective, make sure that you, you know, you're establishing the plans and the roles and the responsibilities. You, you need to know what it is you're going to do depending on the incident. You know, if you get the if you get the virus on the computer, what are you going to do? Um, you know, if you've got an intrusion and you see data X flowing out of your environment, what are you going to do? You don't want to have to try and figure this thing out like a lot of folks do um, at, you know, at when it's happening. So you know, if you don't have that plan, make sure you're, you're developing that plan and you're implementing it within your organization. And drill it. Um, the reality is a lot of folks will create the plan. Uh, it looks great, but they never used it. So what happens is, is the day that something happens, they run around, scream and shout, and forget they have a plan. So even if the only thing you ever do is table top it and go through your plan and say, this is what I would do, make sure that you go through that process. Make sure that you're, um, you know, you've got all the information that you need you know, for all of your operators. You know, make sure that they have, you know, even if it's a thumb drive, you know, that they have that information available to them because it may not, you know, depending on the incident, maybe you won't have access to the electronic copies. You know, so you need to make sure that you know, they have access to that information. You know, wherever they may be, they may need to, to call people within your organization. All that sort of information will be there. So there is a place for technology, right? You know, yeah. So, so the you know, defense in depth is definitely you know, part of what it is that we're talking about here from an IT hygiene perspective and from you know, making sure you've got a, a functioning information security program. Um, yeah, I think that you know, when we're talking about technologies like you know, network segmentation, single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, those sort of things can absolutely be happening in parallel as you're doing all of this other work. And they should, they should be because they're, they're, you know, if you don't have these sort of technologies in place, you know, again, depending on what it is you're trying to implement uh, within your organization, you know, th these are the sort of things that you're going to see and you're going to expect to see within an enterprise environment you know, continuing on uh, into the future. But from a, from, from a foundational perspective, um, you, know, you definitely need to be focusing on patching and secure configurations, and you can do these sort of things in tandem, but if you aren't doing these other, uh, other pieces of work, um, you know, like, like the, the IT, foundational IT items, you're absolutely going to be seeing things. You, you may see your organization falling into that same trap as what we've been seeing in this, this past year here in 2017.